Okay, in this lesson right here, what we're going to do is take a look at actually animating our alien character. And once it gets done, in the next lesson, we'll be able to actually take this animation data, plot it back, and take it back over into the wonderful world of Maya so that we could finish using it there. Now, we've got kind of a special treat for you this time around. I have decided to show just how easy Motion Builder is by putting Zach at the wheels. How about that, Zach? I'm pretty excited. All right. Now, show us what you've got. All right. Well, uh, you can see we've got our little alien character back up here. I'll just kind of pan around and get a good look at him again. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to do about a four to five second sneak cycle on him. Like he just Four to five seconds? Four to five steps. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Good morning, Zach. I was getting a little worried, though. Yeah, it's a four to five step uh, sneak cycle. Like he's just kind of creeping around, maybe lurking outside your home or something. And uh, let's see, the first thing I'm going to do here is uh, set. he's already characterized. He's ready to go. So I'm going to. Uh, select him under my character controls. Under edit, I'm going to go ahead and select his character control rig. It's already active. We're pretty much ready to go. I need to move him up above the uh, the ground plane here because what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn on floor contact and just use that to keep his feet planted. But you'll see if I grab the cell here that grabs his uh, his central effector here at his hips and I pull him up, he kind of breaks there. What what we're seeing here is feedback from the control rig. The control rig actually tries to keep all the animation in this guy realistic, but n actually, we you know we don't need uh, all that control all the time. Sometimes we need to move him and be free of the the pinning, is as it's called. Actually, these uh these effectors are pinned. Uh, we need to be free of that every now and then. So what we can do is we can hold down the Q key, and you see what that does over here is uh it checks in this checkbox for release. That releases the pinning. We can grab him and drag him up with uh with no trouble at all. So we're coming down here, I'm going to switch on floor contact. I'm going to hold down the Q key again and just drag him down until his feet bend a little bit, his knees bend, so we know that he's uh, actually planted on our floor. And before we begin animating, I need to kind of put him into a little bit of a better pose, really, kind of like, you know, the first step. I don't chatter too much when I'm animating, but that's okay. I'll kind of let you know what I'm doing. There's something really cool I would like to show you here. I zoom in on this guy. How we're going to get this guy up on our on his toes? Because his feet are planted, we can pretty much, you know, move his uh, his ankles around any way we want to. And at any time his foot should be passing through the floor, the rig is going to compensate for that and keep him from actually penetrating the floor. So actually, if we rotate his feet down, it's just going to slide his toes back, which is exactly what we're looking for because we need him to be, you know, kind of sneaking around on tiptoe. Translate tool out. We'll slide the, the right foot forward. Kind of slide the left foot back a little bit. Kind of space these out just a little. All right. Let's see what we got here. Let's kind of lean him over a little bit. control rig is awesome. Let's lean his head back a little bit at the neck and then we'll rotate it the rest of the way up. Really make him look kind of creepy like he's really lurking. Let's fix his arms. He's not about to take off or anything. So we'll translate his arm forward. Bring it in just a little bit. And we'll actually use translation on the elbow to straighten his arm out. Maybe his elbow needs to be a little bit higher. That's looking pretty good, I think. We'll grab his wrist, go to rotate. I'm going to hit F2, and what that's going to do, that's going to be just like going over to transforms and changing my rotation to local. It's just a hot key. That's going to rotate his hand up a little bit. Let's go over and position his other arm. Let's grab the elbow again. Now you'll notice what I'm doing to, to select pieces of the control rig, effectors, 
instead of actually trying to double click them in the viewport or control click them where I've, see I've got a lot of geometry a lot of things in the viewport that I could see right here I select his geometry I don't really get the effect that I want so uh, motion builder has this nice uh, character representation window over here with uh, these cells inside I can click on any one of these cells and it will s automatically select any uh, any of the effectors within the control rig so we deselect his geometry bring that wrist down a little bit and uh, just like before we're gonna rotate that wrist up let's kinda pull his knees out a little bit make it look a little less like he's about to stumble Alright, I think we're ready to go ahead and start a walk cycle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit key. And what's going to happen, we're going to get a, a window here from Motion Builder. It says you are about to key on the base layer. It is recommended to use layers when keyframing with control rigs. Now it's going to we're it's going to give us the option of go ahead and going to layer one. We'll go ahead and do that. Basically what it's telling us is uh, that control rigs work a lot more powerfully if you go ahead and, multi and uh, animate them in multiple layers. So we're going to go ahead and do what it says. We'll start off on layer one. Let's stay order organized. We're going to go into our F curves menu and look at layer one. We're going to rename this to feet because that's going to be the first thing we're going to animate with this guy. We've got our first keyframe in place. Let's go ahead and slide our time slider up to about frame 25. Now you'll notice there's a second number over here right after our frame number. It's, uh, it's, it says 78 right now. What that means is we're at basically at frame 25.78, about 78 hundredths of a frame. We don't really want to do that. I, I like laying my keys at, at exact locations within the timeline. So I can come over here to this menu at the end. This is the snapping menu. And I can select snap on frames. What that does is when I drag my time slider and let go, like right here it says 15.83. When I let go, it's going to round up to frame 16. That kind of helps you lay your keys on exact frames. So let's go to frame 25. What I'm going to do for our first step, actually, you know, I could be too picky about my animation, but I'm going to pull his elbows down a little bit. There we go. I like that a little nicer. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and key that back in. All right. Go back to frame 25. You can tell I've animated once or twice in my life. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the foot that should be stepping. I'm going to select these cells in here to grab the effectors in the, in the main uh, section of his torso. And I'm just going to slide him forward from the side. I could do this in an orthographic view from the side, but I'm just one of those workers that likes to work in my perspective view. So we'll slide him forward until his feet are pretty much lined up. We'll just grab the foot that should be stepping, and we'll pull it forward. That's looking pretty good, so we're going to put a key there. Let's go ahead and go up to about frame 50. Uh, 51 isn't bad. Now the, uh, the right foot should be stepping, so we're going to grab the right foot, both cells of the, uh, of the torso and the control rig. We're going to slide him forward again until his feet are lined up. We'll just grab the foot that should be stepping, pull it forward, and key. We're going to slide up to about frame 75, or 76, that's just as good. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can really see what's going on here. Now for his, uh, his left foot, just follow the same pattern. What I'm doing when I grab all these parts up here in, uh, in his upper torso, I'm just kind of keeping the control rig from from pulling too far. Because really all I want to do is just move his feet around. I want the whole control rig to come with me for the time being. We're going to use that great rigging system here in just a minute to get some real lifelike uh, bounce and sway out of him as he's sneaking along. So let's go ahead and we'll drop a key here at frame 76. And just kind of preview this. 
that should be pretty much enough to get us started. Now you'll notice that his feet really aren't stepping. They're more or less sliding along the ground. That's a simple tangency problem. Right now the tangents on this guy are set to automatic. They're pretty much like, uh, like curves. It's interpolating a curve as it moves along the timeline. We need to fix that and flatten these guys out. So I'm going to start by just selecting one of these ankles. And uh, these guys are moving forward in the Z axis, so we'll select our Z translation. And here's a really good example of what I'm talking about. You'll notice that we've placed keys at the locations we need the feet to be, but the interpolation of these curves has actually made that curve go up a little higher and then a little lower than we want it. Yeah, they're overshooting. Thanks, that's the word I was looking for. So uh, we'll select all four of these guys, and we'll hit the flat button here, and that'll flatten those guys right out. In fact, let's go ahead and preview that. So uh, his left foot in this bit has been tacked down, and his, the tangency has been made flat, while the, the right foot hasn't. So you'll notice his right foot is stepping while his, his left foot is stepping while his right foot is sliding. So we need to go ahead and fix that for his other foot. Check the tangency on the Z translation. We'll press the F key to kind of frame that up a little bit. We'll hold down Control and select all four of these guys and just press the flat key. Rewind and check one more time. And he's stepping just fine. We do have a little bit of an issue, though. I mean, his feet are moving forward. They're staying planted when he steps. But his, his feet really aren't coming off the ground yet, so we kind of need to fix that. We'll do that one foot at a time. We'll grab the ankle here on his left foot. And we'll just kind of drag forward on the timeline. That should be the foot that's stepping right now. So right about the point when those two feet line up with each other from the side, we're just going to grab that foot and kind of pull it up into the air. Now we're going to change our keying mode to body parts. There's really no need to lay a key down for his entire body at this point just to get this one foot to come up a little bit. So we'll, we'll switch to body parts only and lay down a key. We'll drag our slider forward. His foot stays on the ground in this one. Slide to the next step. When the feet line up, we'll just pull up a little bit. Press the key button. I could be hitting K right now, but see, I'm using uh, my left hand to hold down my uh, control and shift key so I can pan around the viewport a lot. So for me, it's just a little easier to you know slide over and hit the, the key button on the screen here. All right, so that pretty much takes care of the, that foot. So we're going to switch over to his right foot. That step, it should, it should say planted, but the next one, it needs to come up a little bit. So we'll bring it up, press key, and that's really all we need for this, this section of the step. All right, we're looking pretty good so far, but there's a little bit of a problem here. And let me zoom in a little bit, give us a better idea of what's going on. Well, notice as he's stepping, his torso isn't going up and down at all. It's just kind of sliding along, almost as if it were on a rail. Very unlifelike motion here. So we need to get a little bounce into his step. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and put this animation on a separate layer. I'm going to come in here under my uh, F-Curves window and change the name of this layer to Bounce. Basically, Motion Builder allows you to animate on several different layers. Those of you who worked in packages like Photoshop understand the purpose of layers. But uh, what it does is I can, uh, I can set up something like the bounce for this guy, and then later I can go back and edit just that bounce without having to deal with all the keyframes that may be in the feed and all that sort of thing. So I'm going to go ahead, and we have bounce selected in our, uh, our key controls layer here. I'm going to lay down an initial key. Actually, he's, he should be planted on the ground right now, about to take a step, so well, let me not do, undo that. Let me grab a, let me select the cell here that should select his torso effector. We're just going to kind of, actually, let me grab all these. I want the whole rig to come with me. We're going to pull him down a little bit, like he's kind of hunkered down. And we'll lay our initial key here. As he steps forward, though, he's going to stay there. See, there's no other animation on this layer to bring him back up. So we're going to bring him back up physically. This is going to give us a little more freedom over how this looks. As he's stepping, we're going to stand him up. But you notice his center of gravity is still right down above, right over the origin, so to speak. And we notice that his left foot is up off the ground. And what that's, you know, really makes it look like he's about to fall over. So we need to kind of adjust his center of gravity. So... Not only will we pick him up, we'll kind of shift his weight over to that foot that's on the ground. 
and we'll go ahead and key that. Now as his foot comes down, it should come down around frame 25. We're going to center his center of gravity back up over the origin. We need to bring him down a little bit and key. And he's going to come up onto his other foot. We'll stand him back up. Not too far. You notice that rig kind of pick up with us. Bring his weight back over the stepping foot and key. Come forward till he steps. We'll bring him back down and center and key. Slide him forward again. He should be on his right foot now, so we're going to pick him up. We're going to slide him over to his right. Just a little, not too much. And key. Comes in his last step. We're going to crouch him back down. Center him back up. Place our key, and really that should be the end of the sequence. So he's really got some sneaking, bobbing action going on there. Really looks like he's creeping around outside his spaceship. Let's rewind and let's hit play. We'll preview this. Now let me go ahead and say real quick, I know there's a lot more that we can add in here. I mean, we've got the rotation of the hips and the rotation of the upper spine and all that, but why don't you just go ahead and throw a little bit on the head real quick just to kind of give it some final feel, and we'll just wrap this section up because I think you've done an excellent job of doing some Sounds quick, good. simple animation. Now to keep other keyframes out of our way, we're going to go ahead and start a new layer of animation. We're going to name this one Head because that's what we're going to be animating this time. All right. And this is completely free of keyframes now. The reason I'm doing this, uh, uh, once again, is like if I were to try to do this on the feet layer where we put all our initial animation, if I wanted to try to make his head turn around or anything, I've got all these keyframes where data has already been placed even for the head. And I would have to go back and, you know, it, it'd just be kind of hard to get uh, like a, a real good simple head turn with all these keys in our way. So I'm going to go ahead and start off here. Let's, uh, let's select the cell up here that will grab his neck effector or his head effector. I'm not sure which one that is. It should, should say so. All right. And uh, we'll use our rotate tool. And we'll just kind of start him out by looking up here. That is so nice, just that, that real-time motion there in the viewer. Start him by looking up there. We'll kind of tilt his head back a little more. And we'll just key that right here. We'll take him forward a few steps. In fact, we'll just take him to the end of the cycle. And we'll just take his head and let me zoom out a little bit, make this a little easier to see. We're going to turn his head back in the other direction. We'll kind of straighten it out a little bit. And just kind of make it look like he's really panning across the landscape, just having a look around. And we'll just lay a key here deselect everything and let's rewind this and have a preview very nice okay now obviously there's room for a lot more to be layered in here as the knees are you know they need to be adjusted a little bit and a little bit going on with the arms the hips the uh, uh, the back itself I mean but you, we get into a problem of time and it just takes so much time for doing animation Zach I really appreciate it. you did a great job and so now what we'll do in the next section is we'll take a look at how we can plot this animation and then take it back over into Maya. So that will conclude the section. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.